Hello, welcome for joining me for another day. Uh, it's good that we can join our hearts together and we can worship the Lord together. We can uh, focus our attention to God. Um, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much for your encouragement, for your support. Um, it's just so wonderful uh, that through technology we can do this. Um, today, as I open my eyes, I keep thinking about a song that I wanted to share with you. It's called, Lord, uh, I Need You. It goes like this. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every how I need you, my one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you. Every how I need you. My one defense, my righteousness, oh God, how I need you. I hope that uh, that will be your prayer and my prayer as we continue through today. Um, I'm excited because uh, we're starting a new sermon series. Uh, it's called, Who is My King? Uh, from the book of Judges. Now, of course. Of course, when we answer that question, who is my king? Jesus is my king. And today we're going to look at how can we rise above life challenges? How can we rise above life challenges? Um, I'm going to give a little bit overview of the book of Judges. If you're not too familiar, it's uh, in the Old Testament. It's right after the book of Joshua, uh, right after the book of Joshua. Uh, this book has uh, 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 21 chapters. Um, in my sermon notes, uh, that if you uh, follow the sermon notes, uh, you will see that uh, I have break it down into three uh, chunks. Uh, the layout uh, of the book of Judges. Uh, first, sorry, uh, chapter 1 uh, to chapter 3, it's introduction. It's a very long introduction. It talks about the people uh, have a political Moral corruption, right after uh, Joshua's die, right after they enter into the promised land, they still have to take over the land. And here it is, um, right away, um, it enter into a dark time, a dark time that they have political and moral corruption. And uh, it talks about also that they have uh, spiritual, a uh, spiritual religious uh, corruption. Uh, the political and moral corruption came from because uh, they have uh, spiritual and moral corruption, because they're not close to God, because they're not walking with God. As a matter of fact, they forgot about God. They forsake God. So that's the first chunk of that, the introduction. And then, of course, there's the content, there's the meat. The meat is starting from chapter 3 to verse 16. Here are all the superheroes. Um, we call them uh, judges. Um, they are not actually the Amin type. Uh, they actually, all of them can fight. Uh, in our day and age, they're the generals. They're the leaders. They're the superheroes. Um, so it talks about uh, 12 superheroes in there. Um, and uh, some record a lot more detail. Uh, some is just a, a very little detail. But uh, nonetheless, God raised up deliverers uh, to rescue the Israelites. And then the last part is the conclusion uh, from chapter uh, 16 to uh, 21. 16 to 21, it talks about their spiritual corruption. Um, and then it talks about uh, their moral and political corruption. So here's the layout of that three chunks. Introduction, uh, the content, which are the judges, the superheroes. And then afterwards, uh, the conclusion. There are four main points throughout this book. 
four main points. Everybody who look at the judges, we're familiar with that four main points. First of all, it's God's people forsake and sin against God. God's people forsake and sin against God. Then God discipline his people. God loves his people, therefore he disciplined his people. He wanted them to come back to him. And then his people turned back to God. They cried out to God and then they repent. They turned back to God. And then finally, God raised up deliverers. They called the judges. And peace reigned for many years. And then after the judges die, um, God's people go back and sin against God. So these are the four main points. These are actually the cycle keep happening. Um, first one, the people forsake and sin against God. And then God brings discipline. And then the people cried out and they repent to God. And God raised up deliverers, judges to rescue the people, to deliver the people. And then afterwards, um, after the uh, and then peace reign, and then after the judges die, they fall back into sin again. And so this cycle happened over and over again in the book of Judges. So there's a key phrase in the book of Judges. Uh, it happened four times. In uh, chapter 17, verse 6, chapter 18, verse 1, chapter 19, verse 1, and chapter 21, uh, verse 25. These, this is the phrase that in those days, Israel has no king. Everyone did as they saw fit. In those days, Israel has no king and everyone did as they saw fit. Is it really that Israel has no king? No, the king is God. But they did not follow God. As a matter of fact, God wants Israel when they enter into the promised land um, as, as a judge, as a deliverer, to show that God's glory. But of course, they didn't. So when we look at uh, the Israelites, we look at their challenges in the book of Judges. It reminds me that in the past, they have challenges as well. Moses, what, what are Moses' challenges? Biggest challenge is to lead the Israelites uh, to uh, uh, come out from Egypt. And then Joshua uh, try to lead the Israelites into the promised land. And then the judges, it's to, for them to go into to occupy the land. So Moses' challenges is to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Joshua's challenges is lead them into the promised land. And the judges' challenges is to help them to drive out the people in the promised land. See, challenges happen in the past. And we have challenges today. Challenges in, in every single time period. There are always challenges. Always challenges. But we've got to remember that God was there in the past. And God is here today. So who is our king? Jesus is our king. Who is our leader? Jesus is our leader. Who is our deliverer? Jesus is our deliverer. If you can say it with me. So who is our king? Jesus is our king. Who is our leader? Jesus is our leader. And who is our deliverer? Jesus is our deliverer. You see, uh, we just celebrated Easter. And that reminds me of a song. Because he lives. I wanted to share that with you. I just want to share the chorus. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. If you know, you can join me. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know oh, He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because He lives Amen, amen to that um, After the intro um, and the layout 
and the key points and the key verse of、uh, the book of Judges, I wanted to bring us to today's message.、Uh, I wanted to share that with you. That、uh, if you have chance,、uh, please look at、uh, chapter one,、uh, all the way to chapter three,、um, verse six. Chapter one, chapter three, verse six.、Um, I'm going to cover that、um, lightly.、Um, so if you get a chance to look at it, please do. Please do look at it.、Um, so let me open up with this. Israel carry. God's promise and His presence to enter into the promised land. That's what happened in chapter one. They enter into the promised land. You see, Joshua had never really lost a battle. He had never really lost a battle. They enter into the promised land. Right in the beginning, they enter the promised land. They were with excitement. They enter into it, and then they go in, and then they have some challenges. They need to drive away the people, and、uh, so. Who who is gonna go? Who is gonna go? And of course, the strongest one, Judah,、um, he he's gonna go and enter into it. But as we know, the story goes, Israel, Israelites, they fail, they fail to drive the people away. So we're gonna look at we enter into chapter two.、Um, today I wanted to focus. How do we rise above our challenges? We first should understand for Israelites, how, why, what makes them fail. What makes them fail? You see,、um, when they enter into the promised land, before they have win a lot of battles, they're like, "Yeah, we're winning a lot of battles." But when they enter into the promised land, the first thing that I think they fail is that they do not have longevity. They do not have longevity. They have win a lot of battle. They're growing tired now. They're into the promised land. They still need to drive the people away. You see. It's like our Christian faith. What happened in the past? You know, God did a lot of amazing things in the past. But if we don't have longevity, if we don't have longevity of today, it's very hard to finish the race. For the Israelites, God was with them. If you think about it, God was with them. It says there, chapter two, God was with them. Even in chapter one, God was with them. They enter into the promised land, but they cannot drive the people out. They're growing tired. They're winning so much. They may be bored. They're tired. You see, today, particularly in our day and age, we need God, and we need to have that longevity. We need to ask God for help. Lord, we need your help today. Please help us to stay focused on you, just like Paul has said, Apostles Paul in Second Timothy,、um, chapter four, verse seven. He said that I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. We maybe in the past have fought good fight, but we're still challenges ahead. There's still challenges of today. Do we still able to fight the good fight? Do we still able to keep our eyes on Jesus so that we could finish the race? Do we still look at it that we keep the faith with the help of God? Longevity—it's the first thing that the Israelites do not have. So, how do we rise above life challenges? We first got to have longevity. Second thing, because they do not have longevity, what else happened to them? They fail. They disobey God. You see, in human human's eyes, when we look at Joshua, when they scout out the land, Joshua and Caleb, these people are big. These people are strong. In human's eyes, we may see that. It's because the enemy are too strong. In chapter two, verse one and two, it says that they have they have chariots filled with iron, iron chariots. You see, in that age, it's bronze and and an iron age. Compared to Israelites, what do they use? Rod, staff, stone. Comparing, we can easily see that in human eyes, of course, we will lose because they have such、um, good equipment. It's like a stone to a tank. How can you win? But God was with them. If God was with them, things would change. But they didn't follow God. They disobey God. What happened is that they started to assimilate with the culture there. They started to worship idols there. And because of that. They disobey, and God brought discipline. 
It's quite interesting. It says that in uh, chapter 2, verse 3, God allowed the enemies, it's like thorns in their side, and allowed those idols, those gods are trapped for them. If you think about it, that's quite vivid explanation, description about like thorns, the discipline, the people staying there. God did not drive those people away. It's, it's like thorns in their side. The gods is like trap for them. God bring discipline to them. For us, our application is this God, our only God. You see, for the Israelites, they have God and then they have other gods. God was not the priority. But for us, it's God, our only God. Do we see the world? You see, the world has many challenges. Do we see the world with God's eyes? And then when the challenges are too big or, or overwhelming, do we ask God to guide us with his word in the Bible to face those challenges? So finally, because they didn't have longevity, because they disobey God, and because they serve other idols rather than God alone, they serve other idols. Apparently, of course, they serve themselves rather than putting God first. The challenges are bigger than them rather than seeing God bigger than the challenges. Sometimes when challenges happen, do we see that as an opportunity that we can experience God? God allowed that to be by their side like thorns. It's for them to see, to grow their faith, to rely on God. In chapter 3, uh, verse, verse 1 to 4, God allowed those challenges to be there. I also wanted to share that when challenges happen, do we serve God or do we serve ourselves and the challenges? That's what the Israelites did. It's that after Joshua's die and after all the leaders die, they forgot about God. They forsake that relationship. They serve other gods. Compared to after Joshua died and the leaders were there, the leaders were serving God. When there's challenges, who do we serve? We need to ask that question. Who do we serve when there's challenges? They didn't serve God. For us, how do we rise above our challenges? It's when challenges happen, we need to serve God. And how does it work? How do we serve God in challenges? Here's the key. It said when challenges happen, we need to give thanks to God. You say, whoa, this is, this is madness. How do we thank God when challenges happen? You see, challenges are an opportunity for us to experience God even more. God allows those challenges happen in, 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 in the Israelites. It's so that they could use the challenges to draw close to God. Today, are we giving thanks for the challenges? I think that's, this is a big lesson to learn. When we have longevity, when we follow God as the only God, then when we see the challenges, we will see the challenges as a way to bring us closer to God. We'll be able to give thanks to God for the challenges. When I was growing up, I played sports. And a lot of times when we have to do extra cardio workout, I was excited. I was very excited because I know that at the end of that cardio workout, I would be much stronger. I would be much ready for the competition. I give thanks. Actually, I look forward to those. Sometimes we face challenges and today it's difficult times. It's even more difficult to give thanks. But I pray that we'll ask God to fill our hearts to see that those are not challenges as an end to itself, but those are challenges so that we can ask God for help, that we can experience Him more. We can experience His work more. We can experience His grace more. We could experience Him, of His closeness, of His presence with us more. Just like that song, He's my defense, my one defense, my righteousness. We experience Him. In those times, if we so focus on our challenges, that means we put our challenges above God. But if we focus on God, 
We can have longevity. We can have Him as the only God. And we could give thanks in our challenges because at the end, we'll come out with better character, with better fit to serve the kingdom. This is how we rise about the challenge. Today, let's ask, us, ask God to help us to experience Him through our challenges today. <clears throat> I wanted to close it with this song. This is a very familiar song. It's Come Thou Found, Come Thy King. It goes like this. Come thou found of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Come thou found, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you were singing, come thou found of our blessing. Come thou found, come thou king, come thou precious prince of peace. Hear your bride to you we sing, come thou found of our blessing. O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, we give thanks. We give thanks that because of your word, because of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in every single age, there are dark times. But Lord, you give us strength so that we can have longevity. You help us to obey you, to follow you with your word guiding us, with your spirit guiding us. And we thank you, Lord, that those are opportunity for us to draw close to you. Lord, we give thanks for you are here with us today. We need you. We need your guidance. And Father, thank you that you are the one that we can come. You are our fountain. You are our strength. You are our defense and our righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Bless us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's receive the Lord's blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he turn his face towards you. May he give you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Have a wonderful week.